Dragons, Laura's Bookish Life is back. If you didn't notice, I did change my name on all my social media just to make sure it's easier for me to find. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to go over the new release YA contemporaries that I read recently and my thoughts about them, if they live up to the hype. I have most of these books, which means for the most part, I really enjoyed them. Normally, if I don't love a book and I read it a long time ago, I probably got rid of it. But I am going to talk about a bunch of books. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. So the first, I'm just going to do an order that they're here. The first book we're going to talk about is See You Yesterday by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is a ground, loosely inspired Groundhog Day retelling. It's by the same author that wrote Today, Tonight, Tomorrow, See You Yesterday, and then, um, We Can't Keep Meeting Like This. And I really enjoyed this book. I think it was a little bit on the longer side, but you basically follow these two characters, Barrett and... Miles and they're in college together so it's their first day of college and they get sucked into a time loop and they're the only two that are trapped in it and I really liked it I thought that it was a little bit science fi light like the whole time loop thing was really interesting I like that they really started off like not really knowing each other but through this time that they got to know each other the ending really surprised me and I enjoyed it I thought it was a fun take on Groundhog Day retelling and it's pitched sort of as like enemies to more. I just think it was pitched as like friends to more, which I tend to like more. They definitely had a little bit of like animosity between them at the start of the book, but as they were forced to sort of work together and stuff like that, I just liked how, you know, they had different tactics to try to get out of the time loop. And it was just a fun read. I gave this book like 4.5 stars for review and I really enjoyed it. It is not connected to today, tonight, tomorrow that I could see, but the covers are super similar. So. Maybe that was a marketing choice, uh, but I went up liking it and I, and I gave it four stars for review. While well, this was a book that I really did enjoy and I would definitely recommend it. It definitely lived up to the hype on my end. Um, and I think this is probably my second favorite book by Rachel and Solomon, but overall I really enjoyed it. Um, and the next book we're going to talk about is Places We've Never Been by Casey West. This is a road trip second chance romance. You follow Nora, and she is going on an RV trip with her mom and her mom's best friend. You know, Nora has a brother, they have a bunch of kids, and she was best friends with Skylar growing up, but they moved unexpectedly, and they haven't seen each other really since. And when they when the road trip has off, Nora thinks, oh my god, this is going to be the best thing, I'm going to be back with my best friend again. Skylar is a little bit standoffish, and as the book goes on, you sort of realize why. The one thing I really did like about this book is it did have a road trip element, so, like, you, they went to a bunch of different places. They went to, like, a lot of places in California, but also in other places they went to the Grand Canyon, and I really like that element, and you also see these characters sort of get closer. There's also some family drama. I will say that there's some illnesses sort of being batted around, and there's a mystery and a secret sort of at the heart of this novel. But overall, I really, really liked it, and I thought it was a fun read. You also have, like, the school element for Nora as well, and, like, what she wants to be. She wants to be a game designer, and then you also have Skylar, who was really passionate about art when he was younger, and that sort of fell out of his life. But overall, I really liked it, and it's probably not one of my favorite books I read by her recently, and I gave this one five stars. It was, it really fulfilled all of my requirements. I love travel books. I love second chance romances. And I just really liked it. And I like that it was just a fun take on the story. Sorry, you can hear my, pup my puppy barking. Um, but yeah, I gave it five stars. And I really enjoyed this one. And it was definitely lived up to the hype. What I'm going to chat about is Always Jane by Jen Bennett. This is her newest book. And I like this book. I gave this book like four stars. I will say this book does have a lot of cheating elements to the story, which I would go in knowing because it does happen pretty continuously. But you follow this character, Jane, and she's sort of dating this young man that is heavily involved in the music industry. Her dad's a chauffeur for another man. And a couple of, I think like two years ago, she had an accident that sort of, she fell into a bunch of water. And that sort of gave her apraxia where she has trouble speaking sometimes. So that would have been a continuous thing that sort of goes through. And the other character's point of view is um fen which is eddie's brother who jane is dating and their paths sort of cross over the summer and they sort of get to know each other it's definitely hate to more but it's also sort of like a second chance romance like and there's also a dog in it because she's a chauffeur and she's taking care of this cute little puppy i enjoyed it it was a very like interesting read because i normally don't like love triangles especially love triangles with two brothers 
But there was a lot of miscommunication in the story, and I think that that sort of added to it. It also was in the backdrop of the entertainment and music industry. Definitely wasn't, like, as prevalent as other books that I've read. If you go to my TikTok, I did some more recommendations. But I did really like it. So I thought it was fun. There was engaging read. Definitely has more cheating than I was expecting. But it was a fun read. Definitely not my favorite by Jen Bennett, but a solid summer read that I would recommend if you were looking for something with a little bit more angst, some disability rap, and some love triangles, because there's definitely a love triangle in this novel. And then we're going to get to the last three, which are probably some of my favorites that I've read so far this summer. The first one is With and Without You by Emily Waverly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is another five-star read for me because I really enjoyed it. Mostly because it was so unique. Um, you follow this girl, this couple named Sienna and Patrick. You only get Sienna's point of view. But they have been together for many, many years. And Sienna's sort of thinking, like, for her senior year, she wants to, like, ch change things up. And she wants to break up, break up with Patrick. And that is her plan going into this conversation with Patrick. But when Patrick tells her him and his family is moving to Arizona, she decides, you know what, I'll keep dating Patrick. And when stuff starts going sideways, we will break up. That is not exactly what happened. So you follow this over her senior year as her and Patrick are separated and you follow them through like text messages and letters and then you have them come together a couple of times and you sort of see Sienna's relationship with, with Patrick, Patrick with changing and her almost falling in love with him again. It also has a lot about self-discovery because Sienna felt very much like a part of Patrick and there was no part of her. So she sort of became a different, she sort of became her own person and sort of developed interests and wants and desires which she didn't really know before this book i really liked it i gave it five stars it's reminded me of reading like um like a second chance romance oh no it, you know what? it reminded me of reading like um an epistolary romance where they were like writing to each other it gave me a lot of like romance like um regency romance vibes because it was almost like they were married and they were like falling in love together so it really was a second chance romance because they, their relationship was in a very, very, like, challenging place. I really liked it. I gave it five stars, and I'm really excited to see what this author duo comes up with next. This book was definitely worth the hype, and I'm super excited to read it. Definitely my favorite book that they have written so far. Um, and then the next book that I also really enjoyed was Once Upon a Cape Prom by Kat Cho. This book was another one that I just loved. Um, it fulfilled so many of my requirements, my requirements being... It has to do with the entertainment industry, it is a second chance romance, and it's best friends to more. Um, so you follow El Alina and Robbie, and Robbie was her best friend growing up. They made a promise they would go to a dance together, but many years later, Robbie has become, he moved away, and he had become an international pop star, and a K-pop star to be specific, and he comes back and sort of is going to keep his promise to take her to the prom and I love this book there was a lot of elements to the story that I really enjoyed she also has a twin brother Elena who um he's very much like loved by everyone so she has to deal with that pressure and Rob you do get both of their point of views in this story which I also really did like because I felt like you got to know both characters more sometimes it's a requirement for me but sometimes like when you have a book like with or without you you don't always need it but I felt like this story was really effective, and I like that it had buy-in, and the relationship had buy-in for both Elena and Robbie. I really loved it. I gave it five stars. I don't really like K-pop, but I like reading books about it because it's just a really fascinating industry. This book was definitely worth the hype, and I really, really like these characters. And then the last book that I'm going to chat about in this video is Melt With You by Jennifer Dugan. Again, another book that I really enjoyed. I've read everything by this author so far and everything other than her first book I really enjoyed but this follows two characters you follow Fallon and Chloe and they sort of had a they had a situation like the summer before where they made out um and then they never talked about it so Fallon is like a very very type a personality and Chloe is very much like you know go with the flow so they don't speak for a year and then they come back together because they have to work on their mom's ice cream truck and their relationship sort of goes from there. This book was very similar to Casey West, but this one had to do more with job and working and elements like that. And there was a lot of moments that I just really enjoyed. It also is 
definitely another second chance romance. A lot of these books that I really liked were second chance romances because I love where characters sort of have a relationship previously and you sort of see it expanded. I love the LGBTQ plus representation in the story. I really did. I also love the road trip and the travel element. I also really like that the characters were sort of forced to work together and that just helped had their relationship deepen. It was a really solid read and I think this is probably my favorite by this author to date. So yeah, those are the six, yeah, those are like the six, seven books that I read. If I had to pick two favorites out of this whole reading vlog, it would probably be Once Upon a K-Prom and With or Without You by Emily Weberly and Austin Sigmund and Broga. Those are the ones that I read most recently. I do will probably do another one at the tail end of summer because I have a lot more contemporaries I still want to read. Let me know in the comments if you've read of any of these or if any of these are still on your TBR or if there's any contemporaries based on the ones that I've just showed you that you think I would love because I'm always looking for more things to add to my TBR. And again, my link tree is below for Laura's Bookish Life. Please follow me on all of my platforms and subscribe if you would like. And I'll talk to you guys soon for my next video. Bye, friends.